to have been written either right before or about the same time as the time the Romans destroyed Jerusalem and the temple, which would have been 70 in the current era. So that's about a generation after Jesus. Mark is so small, so short, and people that are used to the Christmas card version of Jesus wonder what happened to Christmas because Mark's Gospel starts with the baptism of Jesus, which Mark sees as the time when Jesus began his vocation, his ministry, his awareness. It's interesting that the church in Egypt for hundreds of years only knew the Gospel of Mark and therefore did not celebrate Christmas and began and the major feast was the baptism of Jesus. The, the sense in which the gospel came to be, since Mark is the first gospel, is that it was laced together from oral tradition, things that had been repeated over and over again. And we have evidence of collections of miracles of Jesus, collections of parables, collections of sayings of Jesus, the story of his death. These all seem to have been assembled before Mark. And the sense of oral tradition is odd for us because we have so much written down, but anybody who jumps rope as a child knows oral tradition because you learn to say the same thing with each verse a little different, uh, Cinderella, Metafella, and, and so forth, on and on again. And so uh, people that jump rope can memorize things 50, 60, 100 verses long just by changing one word each time. That's probably how oral tradition preserved the sayings and teachings of Jesus. We have legends and comments about Mark being a companion of Peter, but there is not that much focus on Peter in the Gospel to give us any assurance of that. Uh, there is a sense that Mark was written for Gentiles and the historical setting seems to have been a world which was infested with demons. So people's awareness of the world was not, oh my God, I got a virus, but I'm possessed by a demon. Uh, demons were seen as uh, present everywhere and the cause of most bad things that happened. There is a big question back in scholarly history. Was Mark a summary of Matthew and Luke, or are, Mark, are Matthew and Luke an expansion of Mark? And it settled on Mark as being the first gospel and forms the skeleton, the chronology, for both Matthew and Luke. And then Matthew and Luke uh, have another source, often called Q, which is the beginning of the German word for source, quella. So Matthew and Luke have more to work with than Mark did. I have a lot of favorite passages, but one that I think is really interesting is chapter 5, which begins with Jesus going into a pagan area 
on the east side of the Sea of Galilee, uh, visiting the Gerasene demoniac, a man who lives up in the hills, is so wild that they make chains and manacles for him, but he keeps breaking them, and howls and gashes himself with stones, and is a general danger to himself and others and a nuisance. And he is assumed to be possessed by a devil. And so Jesus arrives there and he sees this man who starts convulsing and shouting and cursing and saying, what do we have to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth? We know who you are. Well, the interesting thing is the first recognition of Jesus in the Gospel of Mark is by a demon. It really confirms what I said about the impression of the readers that their world is full of demons. And so Jesus tells the man to leave, or the devil to leave the man, and asks him what his name is, and he says, our name is Legion. Well, a legion is a division of a Roman army. And you get the joke if you realize that the writer is comparing the infestation of Romans throughout the Mediterranean world with the infestation of demons and sees them as one and the same on some level. And so the man is uh, told for the demons to go out. The demons ask to be sent into some swine. You know you're not in a Jewish area because they don't eat pork. And the swine all absorb the demons and then jump into the sea. The sea, of course, in Mediterranean time was seen as the metaphor for chaos. So basically, the devils go where they belong. And the man is sitting there, dressed, has his dignity back, is calm, and is sitting as a disciple at the feet of Jesus. And then when the swine herds observe what's happened, they get afraid and they want Jesus to leave. And Jesus uh, says to the man, go tell everybody what you have just seen because the man wants to go with Jesus. Well, this story brings together two wonderful layers in the Gospel of Mark. It's a story about Jesus. It shows his power over the demonic world. It shows the respect that the demons have for him, but it also is the story of the reader. Everybody has days when they're howling among the tombs, can't stand themselves, gash themselves with metaphorical stones, need to be chained up, are a problem for themselves and everybody else. Everybody knows themselves that way. And the idea that an encounter with Jesus will leave them with their normal state restored, sitting or kneeling like a disciple at the feet of the master is a dream, is a wonderful dream. And so Mark is writing to the reader, wouldn't you like to go through this transformative experience? That's what an encounter with Jesus is about.